He has hung on. He's faced 117 balls. He's been out there for over two and a half hours for that 35. That's nicely placed. And well enough timed. First boundary of the morning and a good one. Maybe De Villiers uh, playing the cover drive well. So that'll give him some confidence. Delivery was full. Gave Abe De Villiers enough room to free up the arms. And he picked that gap between Medoff and cover well. Oh, what about it? What about it, Mr. Buckner? Yes! Peter Sinnell! Don't think Mackenzie likes it at all because he reckons he's got a lot of bat on it. Now we might have a referral. I think that's what it is. Mackenzie wants that referred. He's very unhappy. No problem as far as foot placement is concerned. This delivery comes back in off the seam. First indication is that he didn't hit it, that it was pad first and then perhaps bat. And then we have to look at height, we have to look at movement off the seam. I mean, all he can be asking about though, surely, I mean, he held his bat. He can't immediately have wondered if it was too high. That's a risky referral. He must be convinced he hit it, but there's nothing in that replay that suggests he's hit it. Out! Neil McKenzie, LBW to Peter Siddle. And a good delivery it was too. We haven't had time to dwell on that. Oh, what's that? Oh, well, no, no, no. Big, big noise. Now we might have a referral again. Have we got a referral? We've got one. The second one of the morning. We have a decision pending. And we have J.P. Dumini with his heart in his mouth. And an awful lot of South Africans. Now we don't have a referral. We have a cancelled referral. And we have a very angry Australian captain, understandably so. We'll have to see what signal he made. Well, this is the great problem with uh, the system. It's so uncertain at present. It's 95 for four. And a lovely stroke. He really is the most natural of batsmen. And they love him here. Hundred on the board for South Africa, it's hundred and two for four. In the end, just short. It's just short, I think, or has he put it down? Oh, goodness, if he has put it down, he'll be well disappointed. It's the skipper as well. Genuine outside edge, the ball swinging away. Oh, goodness me. Goodness me, look at the frustration there. They go for the catch, he's gone. He's walking, he's on his way, it's worked, the short one, he's gloved it down the leg side, and too many goes without Billy Bowden even being called to make a decision, and that is a massive blow for South Africa. Johnson strikes, and the home side are in heaps of trouble at 138 for five. The plan has worked, that's the strategy they wanted to employ. They tried it early on, this time it was successful. Dumini didn't wait for the decision. He was on his way straight away. So JP Dumini gone for 17. South Africa in trouble. 138 for five. Oh, beauty. They go up for the catch. He's got him. And Boucher asks immediately. Boucher asks for referral straight away. He's been given out. Boucher shakes the head. Now then, another referral. Well, it's all happening today, so let's hope for no technical difficulties this time. Boucher shakes his head. He thinks he didn't hit it. The third umpire will have to disagree. I'm not sure that he's going to, though.
Archer was, oh, I suppose he's not going to admit it, but now has that, is there daylight? You see, that's so difficult for the third umpire to say that he's missed that. It's so close to the edge. Here's another end. Let's watch the seam and see if the seam changes off. Oh, now there, it is so ambiguous. Is there daylight between bat and pad? Is there evidence for Asad Raf to overturn the decision? Probably not. Well, he's made the decision and he's been upheld and confirmed. So Billy Bowden will be happy about that. Mark Voucher, of course, won't be. It took a fair amount of time to get the decision made. So South Africa now in all sorts of trouble at 138 for six. Oh, he's given that absolutely everything. Fabulous hit from A.B. de Villiers. The footwork and the commitment made the stroke. Well, good morning, Marcus North. Wow, what a way to start. Just run, you know, just run up there and lob it. Expect maybe a forward defensive will be quite nice just to sort of settle in against a new bowler. No, that's the end, surely for Mone Morkel. Peter Siddles underneath it and takes it against the bright sky. If the shot before was okay, that one was horrible. Really horrible, and it means that seven are down. He's a big, tall fellow, Mornay Morkel, and there is absolutely nothing wrong in getting on the back foot and just punching that into the covers. The pull shot isn't one that he plays all that well, I'm afraid, and he's going to have to learn to play a lot better at this level if he wants to continue to do it. 154 for seven. Pad, LBW, call out, LBW. You felt it had to be. What a match for Marcus North. Yeah, well, it certainly wasn't uh, an appeal for a catch. First slip wasn't interested in the least. It was Clark who caught the ball, but this is what it's all about. Hit him full toss on the toe. Now, when that happens, the umpire must assume that the ball is going to continue in the direction from A to B in a straight line. But mustn't but assume that it's going to turn. But did it hit him outside the line? He played a stroke. If it's hit him outside the line of off stump, he shouldn't be given out LBW. My first impression is that it did just that. A single for Harris, 156 for eight for South Africa. Edged, and it goes through the court and down towards third man for four. Runs for Stein. The end of the first over after lunch, 163 for eight. Oh, he's always missed. Edge found, and De Villiers has been put down, and there could be a deflection of overthrows here. Stain is unaware. He's coming back from a long way down the far end, so they'll get back for two. Drama early here after lunch. Some luck goes A.B. De Villiers' way, yeah. Now, whose catch was this? Was it? For the keeper or was that first slips catch now it's going straight to marcus north but as once the keeper starts to go he's got to keep going but almost keeps swinging away and he's at full stretch with one glove difficult for the keeper to take that and then there was a shy which hit and stain was on his merry way down towards the boundary and had to be called back by ab de villiers steered away to third man soft hands that runs for four Bowl is done like this. I've just seen a catch being put out and now uh, thick outside edge to the third man boundary. Oh, beautifully bowled and coped with, should we say. It suits you, Brett. Great idea. Yeah, he's facing it yet, Dale Stone. Are they happy to dish it out to the Australian quicks? That could be nasty. You don't want it uh, striking him on his his bowling fingers. Mitchell Johnson got him out like this in Perth, so that when they practiced on Christmas Eve in Melbourne, A.B. De Villiers, his good friend, was serving with a tennis ball and tennis racket bounces to him from 15 yards. Not time, but he's pierced the gap away at extra cover. They'll come back for two.
Now then. Oh, gosh, you wouldn't believe it, would you? He pedaled and pedaled and pedaled back, but not quite enough. It was tantalizingly close and just teased him, Marcus North, and Siddle would have been wheeling him on. I think he got a finger on it as well. Oh, goodness. So, so close. It's not how at the moment. It's all about how many. looking to get forward get bat on it he's undone by the movement it's off the edge but it goes in the gap well placed really well placed and timed AB AB you are playing quite beautifully out there and once more you've moved to within nine of a hundred that is some shot. They are men in the deep. He is confident enough to play this in the air in front of mid-wicket. No, that's much closer. That's horribly close. Oh. Whoa, whoa. I just wonder. I think that's worth... Yeah, we have. We've got a referral. I agree. That is worth another look. So, Ricky Ponding has asked for the third umpire, Asad Ralph to judge on whether or not he thinks Billy Bowden has got this wrong. First impressions, I've got to say that I thought it was out. Question, I suppose, also will be, is it hitting him in line? Has he got outside off? Or is it going down? Is there a bit of angle involved? Certainly not a no ball. Bear in mind, this is A.B. de Villiers, who has 92 and is in the middle of a rescue operation. said Ralph may well go the way of the Australians here there doesn't seem to be any bat involved certainly hit him okay in, in line between wicket and wicket looks to me like it's going on to hit the stumps he's gonna have a look twice here at height once from side on front on it hits him in the middle of the road of the pad oh we've had a decision given There is an element of doubt, not out it is. All about height it'll be. That's nicely taken. It's a comfortable catch. But it is nicely taken. Just on the left side of Marcus North, it slipped. One that on another day Brad Haddon might well have gone for, but he paid for going for one a little earlier. So Stain finally goes. It's a good delivery, a very good delivery. He's probed as bold as straight as he can. And this was always going to be the test for Stain. Would he be able to continually keep McDonald out, having to play the majority of deliveries bold at him? Answer, no. He's gone for 17. South Africa, 208 for 9. Pulled away. Pulled away in his 50th test match, he goes to his eighth test century. Well played, A.B. de Villiers, and he's done it mostly with the back end of the batting order. Gets uh, justified applause from the dressing room. It's been a wonderful innings. The eighth time that he's passed the century mark. What a thrill to do that in front of. A packed house at the Wanderers. Mitchell Johnson's back in into the attack. He's had a great test match with the bat and the ball. Bowled him out. 
And that is the end of the innings. It only took one ball from Mitchell Johnson. And now we'll find out exactly what Ricky Ponting does intend to do. 100 not out, De Villiers. And Johnson just swinging this back into the right-hander. He's arrived in Australia with a delivery that he did not have during the series at home for him. And that, what a bonus that is for Mitchell Johnson. That was just about the perfect delivery to a tailender. It swung, it moved in off the seam and bowled Mackay and Tini through the gate. So a good performance by Australia. They've got control of the test match for the moment. That was a disappointing batting effort from South Africa's perspective. Abe de Villiers, a standout player with 104 not out, so he was quite superb. Neil McKenzie tried hard, he got stuck in, he grafted. But apart from that, there was not much uh, for.